end of today. I actually had a, a, like a debugging session, so maybe if we have some time and we want to do something, we could discuss committing code or doing whatever. Uh, I just wanted to mention a little bit about, uh, sorry, I'm lost here among my slides, uh, about uh, governance and money in the project. Um, If we, we have a lot of money, actually. Uh, but you can't have any. Uh, so I, I just wanted to mention a little bit why and how. Uh, to, I want to suggest that we handle money, a little bit of where the money comes from right now and where it goes. Uh, something about a software freedom conservancy and commercial support. So we do get donations, so, so there, there is a feed of money coming in actually, mostly through Open Collective, um, and we do spend money as well. I mean, we're here, right? So we actually have, uh, we have costs. We, I, I want to, I've mentioned this before on the mailing list, I want to kick off the bug bounty program with Curl. I've already been in contact with Hacky One quite a lot, but they're not very fast, and I really haven't really pushed them recently. But I want to make sure that we run our own bug bounty together with Hacker One, and I want to bootstrap our donation funder, or basically pay the bug bounty system by um, funneling in money that we have gotten from donations to start off uh, the bug bounty program. Uh, I don't expect there to be any serious, significant total disaster bug, so I figure if we have a uh, um, if we donate uh, uh, or pay up to like $500 per bug, starting off with $3,000 or $4,000 or something to begin with, could be a really good start. And we have that sort of money. Do you, do you, do you have any previous experience with bug bounties? Yes, a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and bug bounties is a good sort of, do we need it, is it a good idea or whatever, but uh, some of our most trusted bug, uh, uh, the bounties, the actual persons reporting bugs, some of them, one of our favorite guy, he's actually doing it full time. So he's a, he's a professional bug bounty hunter. He's actually going for bugs in projects that can pay him because he wants food on the table, right? So he's actually actively hunting down projects that have bug bounty programs and then run for bugs there and report them. So, in, in, and I think that is an excellent case wh where a bug bounty program actually benefits us because we get people like that guy into our project to search. And he's an, <laughs> he's an excellent guy. So he's very good at finding bugs and reporting exactly, you know, I ran this little thing, this happened, here's the, here's the example, run this, I found blah blah. So it's, he's a, it's an excellent resource. And, and an example of an excellent resource that I think we can encourage by actually paying to get this for more reports. Right now, then, he doesn't get paid at all. Well, well he can't. Right now, uh, anyone who reports a bug on Curl can get money from HackerOne's uh, internet infrastructure uh, fund. They have some, yeah, um, I don't remember the name, it's called. So, so if, if you find a bug in Curl that is significant enough and it's unique and special, you can ask for money from HackerOne because they already do that. But it's a really high bar. Basically, nobody does that. And you, you're not, you never qualify for it because it's not it's important enough. So, so it's really hard. So basically, to all of these minor ones that people have reported the last couple of years, none of them qualify. So no, in practice, you don't get money. So why is he bug Well, he got back when we started the bug bounty program using these other guys that we stopped doing. So we sort of we started the other bug bounty program, he got back on the track and he wanted to find it and then we shut it down again. So he got money from that. He was the only guy who got money from that bug bounty program before we shut it down, well, before they shut it down. So. But you're, you're trying to engage HackerOne now? Yes. Well, I'm already in contact with them, so we're, we're about to start this. Or, or rather, I actually hope that we would already be on our way. I'm, it's a little bit on my table to get it going. I haven't really pushed them. So.
I'm sure we will get there because we have everything organized. I already have the accounts, we have the websites, we have the, everything set up. It's just a matter of me making sure that uh, since we get the money in donations to Open Collective, Open Collective then holds on to a lot of money for us. So for the money to go to Hacker One to be able to pay out for bug bounties, Hacker One needs to get them from Open Collective, and I haven't really managed to get them to do that yet. So just does, does, I know a bunch of people at Hacker One top-down? Yeah, yeah, and I've, and I've talked uh, with the very top, too. Okay. A man you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, so just let me know. Right, so, so I think it's more of a thing. I just need to push them a little bit and, and be more responsive myself. So it's a, we, we should get, get there any, in any day now. And also, since some of us <laughs> are working with commercial support with Curl, I, I wanted to not because anyone has actually asked it for me, but I just wanted to make sure that when we're talking about money in the project, I want to make sure that we're money in the project is not money, it's not my money. I'm, I might do a lot of things with Curl, but it's not my money when we're talking about money and, and Curl. So that's, I, I also want to make sure that we don't, I don't want to get, uh, get that boundary blurred. Uh, and right now, when we don't have any legal entity to handle money in the project, we always have this problem. What do we do with money? Right? Who owns the money? The money is somewhere. None of us are actually a CURL project. We don't have a legal entity for CURL, which is problematic at times. Usually, it ends up being one of our companies, or we have sponsors paying directly, and it works usually pretty good. But every once in a while, it, it, it would be good to have an actual placed that can hold on to money. So we have uh, over 8k uh, do uh, US dollars right now and we have some um, recurring donors that are keep pouring in money so it'll just grow over time. We have I think in the in the vicinity of $400 per month coming in so if, if we don't come up with ideas about to spend the money it'll just <laughs> It's a luxury problem, but I, I think it's good to just be aware of that we have actually some funds. It's not a lot, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, but it's monetary. So I want to start off with 3K of that to the bug bounty program that I'm talking about. And hopefully, ideally, if that turns out to be a really good idea and people start actually finding bugs, maybe we can pour in more money in there. Maybe we can even find sponsors paying is funding the bug bounty program directly. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we could help um, cover costs to get people to curl up. I've been in contact with a few students this time that were, were actually a bit concerned about traveling here for, for the, just for the cost of traveling and I've actually offered to help sponsor them coming here but it didn't turn out anyway in the end but uh, I think we can still consider that kind of activity or that behavior. Uh, yeah, and I've been thinking about maybe we could also even pay some infrastructure with that money. It's not that I'm in a great need of that, but I still consider it. All right. So I just wanted to mention that we also have some sponsors of the project that are actually paying for a lot of things, which relieves the project from having to pay for a lot of things. So that's why all that money coming in from the uh, donations they basically just pile up because we don't pay. We have sponsors paying for infrastructure and bandwidth and a lot of things. And and these silver sponsors, I, I think it's a. <laughs> I think it was pretty clever of me to encourage people to. They we call I call them silver sponsors if they pay at least one hundred dollars per month and then I give and then offer them a logo placement on the website as a sponsor. And so so we have this great famous site. Are, I, I love them because they're totally unknown to me and just, you know, random small sites. But they're, they're curl enthusiasts and they want to sponsor us, so they pay that money and they appear as silver sponsors. I tried to up the game by, enter, by creating a gold sponsor level too, but nobody has <laughs> taken that fight yet. <laughs> $500 per month. But yeah, okay. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> you can have your own special section on the website named after you. <laughs> no, 
No, but I, but I love this company. It's like made to clean. It basically has nothing to do with curl. But but the the person who I was in contact with said he's a great curl fan. He is in for the long term. He will help us. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. So uh, about then the um, governance. I, I've uh, applied for curl to become a member of the Software Freedom Conservancy, and that is only a legal entity for us to. Basically, it's a, yeah, it's a US nonprofit, which I think also is good for because the most of the donations coming from companies are US companies. So it makes sense to be a US nonprofit if you want to uh, get US donations. Uh, it's just a legal entity to hold on to money, really, without uh, any of us personally having to hold on to money or me having to funnel money through my company or other companies or, or my personal account. So they don't control what we do with the money. Uh, they don't control how we run the project. Nobody is going to take over the code. We don't, they don't affect how we run the project in any ways. Um, they will, of course, uh, charge some percentage of the money they hold on to for, as a fee for this. But I figure that is still worth it. <clears throat> and then if we do this and we have money coming in and they hold on to it, the, we are probably going to have to have some sort of who's going to decide what we do with the money. And I, I have a, my proposal is then that we have some sort of steering group, committee, team, couple of people that just basically so that I, I don't want to end up in a situation where I alone decide all that money because then we're back to the boundaries. That <laughs> I don't want to just make all the decisions without nobody else ever seeing that. I just want to make sure that there are at least a few others who are just being aware of what's happening. I don't, it's not going to be a big thing. It's not going to be a problem. So I just, I just like to have that. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think we can handle money in the public all the time. So I don't want to just... Uh, publicize everything on the mailing list all the time, but I rather make it in a little group instead. And then we spend money according to what's good for the project. That's, that's my proposal. So, and I also then want to make sure that what, whatever anyone does that is commercial curl support, um, or commercial anything, anything really around curl, that's not really the curl project that is outside. So even if I work on curl, support or I charge someone for curl stuff that is not with the curl project and that's the boundaries I want to I want to have. I want to have the curl project there, me doing curl stuff could be uh, outside of that. Even if when I do it I understand that it's not always crystal clear if it's me the project or whatever. But it's of course free for anyone. Anyone can do curl support. Curl is open source. It's Liberty license, so anyone can do it. It's not. It's, I'm not in a special position here. Well, I'm in a special position, but anyone else can also attempt to have that position. So then, I offer commercial support, <clears throat> and then so we have a lot of money, or we have money potentially a lot of money over time. So we could consider doing things with money that we haven't ever done in the project. Maybe we could come up with things. I'm not suggesting that we actually should just bring up a lot of ideas now. I'm just saying that it's good to keep in mind that there actually is money around if we come up with a good idea to, to use money or a need or desire to do something. I'm uh, in contact with Software Freedom Conservancy. They have already said that they have accepted our um, application to become a member of, of that uh, nonprofit. And, <laughs> and they contacted me uh, immediately before FOSTEM and they said, sure, we want to accept you because they already, as other members, they already have a few projects that are very intense uh, current users, like the Git project, for example. So we're already friends of, the, of them. So they told me, let's set up a meeting the week after Foster. And then crickets. Uh, again, uh, I think it's about a little bit to me now to push the agenda forward and make sure that it actually happens. Uh, so I'm going to set up with some sort of meeting with them and discuss exactly how it's going to be done. Uh, I think we have basically everything in order to just 
agree somehow and uh, it'll happen magically. I don't, I don't really know uh, what the procedure is. I answer to a lot of questions about people owning rights to the code. Uh, affiliations among the top contributors. No, I think the question was like, what's that affiliation with, with the contributors to curl? Sort of, <laughs> where do people work? Who pay for everyone? I limited that to the to everyone who has committed more than one percent of the code. <laughs> so, d does the software freedom conservancy then own the copyrights? No. What are they? What, what, I don't understand what what fits between the project and them. I know Brandon as well. They they will they will hold on to our money. It's, it's strictly financial. Yes. So that we, as an, and it's a non-profit, so it's easier to receive donat uh, donations in the U.S. But, but strictly for financial reasons. Okay. Do you need to uh, fly to the USA to play <laughs> 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 I, I mentioned that so they know that I can't go there. But I, I'm, and, and I, actually, when, uh, we, when we discussed joining SFC a long time ago, and then one of the, back in, then, back in those days, Yang was very much against joining SFC because it's an American organization. It's, so it is an American organization, so that might be some, I don't know, not a concern, just you should be aware of it. But since it's only just a, I mean, none of us need to be there. We just need to be sure that we agree on who decides what we can do with the money so that we can still do things with the money uh, that we want to do, even though the money is in the US. But most of our money is already in the US, right? Open Collective is a US nonprofit as well. So the money, the, the money we have uh, uh, right now mostly donated, we actually also have some amount of donations that are donated via PayPal and then arrive, they arrive at my account, <laughs> which then blurs the binders completely. But uh, that's in comparison, peanuts in comparison to the amounts Open Collective holds on. That was what I wanted to say about governance and money. So it's 4.20. Does anyone have any questions? I want to do anything fun, or should we wrap up for the day? There's dinner at 7, and Jim ran away. 